All right, picking up where we left off, let's set up our character's inventory and get them picking things up. You are wearing the wrong thing. That'll work. All right, so for our character to have an inventory, we need to create a variable over here called inventory, and it will be of the type item info struct. Now over here on the right, we can click this little drop down arrow, arrow next to variable type to create an array. So that's what we're gonna do. That'll let us have a bunch of different types of inventory items. We're gonna create another variable called inventory size. This one will be an integer and it will be a single instance of a variable. So with that done, let's go into our class settings and we need to add in that interact blueprint interface so that we can actually get access to that pickup event. So how we're going to get our character to start interacting with the world, we are going to go into our edit project settings and we need to set up an input event and an object collision type. So over here on the left, down in the input under engine, we will add an action mapping. We'll call this interact you can make this any button you want I'm gonna use E on the keyboard because it seems standard nowadays so with that done you don't have to click save or anything we can go under all settings and type in object so that we can find object channels you can have up to 18 custom channels including object and trace channels we want to add a new object channel called interact default response will be to block so we'll accept that back in our main world we'll go ahead and save just in case just in case I'm wrong about that oh this is your best friend right here I love this button I click it sometimes just to let it know I still think about it so in the event graph we'll go here and find some space I guess they got rid of the VR stuff. All right, so in here, let's grab out our interact function, which is under action events, action events, action events. This is the one you want. There will be some other ones, but you want action event under input interact right there. There we go. So we're actually going to create a function over here called interact trace. Now in our event graph, we can go ahead and just connect this right here. That way we don't have a bunch of strings out here. But in here, what we want to do is we want to do a sphere trace for objects. And this is why we set up an object type. So sphere trace for objects. And now this work might get a little bit complicated, but not too bad, not too bad, I promise. So we're going to grab out our character's mesh. We're going to get the location. Get the world location. And get the forward vector. Now, I don't want this to happen at the character's location. I want it to happen just a little bit in front of her. So we are going to add from the world location a set amount in the forward direction. So I'm going to multiply my forward vector. It's this little asterisk, just shift eight, and you get that little icon. And you can get multiply, or you can type multiply. I don't know how else, however you want to do it. You'll get this multiply vector by vector, but you can right click this bottom one and convert the pin. We want a float, like a parade, but we want to only go, let's say, 50 units ahead. So it'll be 50 units just in front of her, and then we'll plug that in, and then that will be our start. I know it's a little bit pain in the backside, but let's copy this, paste it down because we want it to end oh we want to go from here where it's starting and go down say 50 units 
So basically it starts in front of her and then goes straight down to the ground to see if there's anything to pick up. So let's let's just check it real quick to see how that looks. What? I saw that. Why are you? The current value object type. Oh, so right here under object types, you can drag off of here, type make for make array, and we want our interact object type. Ah, it's starting at her feet. All right, so <laughs> we want to get our actor's world location and actually, you know what? I don't want to overcomplicate it. Let's just add a scene component to our chest mesh and this will be our interact trace start. So I'm just gonna drag this up into position right in front of her like that and then we'll just use it so interact trace start get the world location and we don't need the forward vector anymore I know I'm sorry I'm very sorry the other way would have just complicated it way too much so we will just get the world location and then we can subtract from this one say 50 units on there and I also noticed we need to set up a radius so we'll set this to be like 45 so now let's try it should have done that to begin with 45 down is not enough or 50 down is not enough let's do just a hundred double it and then we're picking up everything that's right in front of us or we're interacting with things right in front of us All right. So then what we want to do on our out hit is we want to break it. And we'll add a branch with a B and a left click to see if we interacted with anything, if it hit anything that has that interact object type. And if it does, then we want to call that interact message. Mm, let's update this interact function. So inside our blueprint interface, let's go back to the interact function. We'll add an input. This will just be called instigator. And it will just be an actor object ref actor object reference. There we go. So now over here you'll see it has this handy little function our addition right here and we'll just pass in a self-reference so now that our base interactable we can go into its event graph get rid of all this crap and then type in event interact so that we get access to that event and then from the actor object reference the instigator we can call the pickup message pass in our item info just like that and then this will communicate to the actor that we just called it from to pass along this information. So now over in the event graph here, we can add in the event pickup. We'll add in a new function called pickup item that will take an input of an item info and it will be item info struct so that we can tell it what item we just picked up. So from event pickup, we just call our pickup item function and pass it along, right? Like just like that. All right. So now for our pickup item function, we want to add this to our inventory, but first we want to check our inventory to see if we a have enough space and be well actually we'll do the space check out here later on we'll just go ahead and add it to the inventory for now so we just want to check and see if we if it's a stackable item if we can stack it so let's grab our inventory get it we will do a for each loop with break hook it in just like that 
The reason we're doing it this way is because if we check the item and determine it is stackable, we have space in that stack to add another one. We can just break the for each loop right then and carry on the rest of it without having to check every single item. So for each item we want to grab this array element and we want to break it open and break this one open over here. We want to see if the item IDs match. So from right here I'm going to drag off and type an equal. <coughs> if it equals enumerator. We want to see if those match and then see if the current stack plus this current stack is less than or equal to the items max stack. So basically we're taking how many we have, how many we're getting, combining them together and seeing if that number is less than or equal to the max stack. Because if it's greater than that, that means we can't really put it there. We'll have to get a new slot. So we want to check both of these. So from this top one, we will do an and boolean. This will make sure that both of these return the same value, whether true or false. Then we'll add a branch right here, B left click, hook the loop up, and plug it just like that. So one thing I am going to do over here just so that we can have it tidy later on is from this item info, I'm going to go right here, promote to a local variable called INC item. INC is just my shorthand for incoming item. So over here, say we have found the item that we're looking for, we will add a new local variable of a boolean called fa b found item and it will be a boolean and then a found item index that will be an integer. So we'll grab out our found item, and when both of those are true, we will set that to true. Found item index, we'll set that to the array index that it found it at. And then right here, we can promote this to a local variable called found item info. That way we can adjust it a little bit easier. And we'll plug that in right there. Um, there we go. So from this final set we can drag it all the way back over here to the break so that it finishes off our little loop. And then we'll just double click to add a couple of these reroutes. Like that. Minimize these so they don't take up too much space. Reposition them. Keep it nice and neat. Now from this completed, this is what it does after it's fully finished this entire loop. We'll add a branch. We'll hook up our found item because if it's true, that's when we want to adjust a stack and if it's false then we just want to add. So for the false we'll just grab our get inventory. We will add and then we'll just pass in that incoming item info just like that. Now if it's true and it did find an item then we first want to set the found item back to false so that next time it runs this function this is false again and can uh, check, do its check properly. So after it finds the item then we want to grab out our inventory array one more time and we want to set array element. So this will give us the array, the index, and then the item that we want to adjust. So we'll plug that in like that. We're gonna need a little bit of room for this one so I'm gonna drag all this way over here. Plug in our found item index and for the item, we want to make item info struct. 
and for that we want to take our incoming item get our found item info and then for the incoming item we can just split the struct pin and we'll just plug all of these right in so if you didn't see if you right click you can split oh it's not going to show me so if you have something like this you can right click and then split the struct pin and it breaks it open so you can see all the pieces so we will just plug all this in to each individual one except for the current stack we will wait on that one for just a second So I'm going to, this is the found item. So this is the item that actually sits in our inventory. So we're going to break this one open because we want to add from this current stack, we want to add how many we have incoming and then set that to the new amount. So highlighting this, we can do hide unconnected pins and then break that down a little bit. And this will let us take our current stack, add this to it, and set that as the new value. So just like that, we should have our stackable inventory all set up. Now, a way we can check this is we'll do print strings. item added. We'll just do it on this one because every item we've set up so far is only a one-on-one -on -one stack so nothing's going to be stackable just yet. Uh, but let's go into our base interactable blueprint, the very first cone thingy that we set up, and we want to adjust its object type. So the static mesh under its collision we want to set it to custom so that we can get access to this object type and then set it as interact. Uh, one thing I like to do is just make it to where it ignores my player's camera just so it doesn't have a bunch of jarring going around. So let's drag out one of these, one of these, one of these. Oh, and it's not really... Oh, 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 no, I do have a print string set up. Item added, item added, item added. All right, so wait, 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 one, way, one way we could check it real quick is I'm going to take the peasant chest and just set its max stack to three for now. You don't have to do that part, but I'm going to add another print string over here just to check and make sure that our print string is functioning appropriately. And we will take our addition right here and just to make sure. And I did that on the peasant chest, so I'll grab out a couple of those. So, item added on the first one, yes. Two, three, item added. All right, so it's stacking to the right one, and then going to a new slot. Fascinating. All right, we can get rid of this now. So, one thing we did, I did notice is that it's not destroying itself just yet so we'll just go in here and destroy actor on pickup I'm gonna save everything real quick so now when we interact it'll destroy the item correctly alrighty then so now with that all done I didn't need near as much room as I thought I was going to a little bit more than that though alright So now we need a way of displaying the information. 20 minutes, let's cut it here and then we'll do the widget stuff in the next one. So I will see y'all in just a little bit. Bye.